everyone. How are you doing today? We have another beautiful day here in Virginia. Well, I was kind of felled this week. I got set back for two reasons. Um, I had, I caught a bug and I jammed my toe into a piece of furniture. I think I broke it. It'll be fine, but it was just painful and I couldn't wear shoes for, I, I still can't wear shoes. But here I am. Now, the only reason I tell you that is that I lost some time sewing. And it's been a little bit of an uphill climb. Because you know our house is still a bit of a wreck. Now we have the contractor coming today at 5 p.m. to assess things and then he will get with insurance and see if they can come up with a number that they both agree on regarding cost to replace everything. At any rate, at any rate, onward and upward. I'm wearing one of my favorite dresses. It is a pattern from 1966. And this is McCall's 8590. It has a yoke, which I love, and I keep meaning to make another. The sun is really bright, but there's a yoke right there. What I'm gonna show you today, and I hope it's of interest, I don't have my clothes ready for the little mini fashion show, and I don't have my make ready for Fabric Mart. Now I try to put that up by the 15th of each month. And this is no bueno <laughs> because I have not even cut it out yet. So I have to throw it into overdrive. Um, I'm working on this dress right now. And what I'm gonna show you today in this video is how I'm going to put in the square neck facing. I've missed you and I'm looking for a reason to put up a video and say hi and keep it sewing centric and not give you a laundry list of my trials and tribulations. They're, they're minor, they're minor. And um, I'm feeling better and I have managed to get all of my Me Made May pictures up over on Instagram despite feeling poorly now I have a streak and I have to keep it going. I believe, what are we on, day 14, day 15? So um, that's been a lot of fun and that has kept me accountable in ways that I couldn't have imagined before. So that's been a great thing. All right, let's go in and attach the neck facing to this dress right here. I am working with Simplicity 7012. And this pattern is from 1967. And as I am wont to do, I skipped the zipper. Without further ado, let's go in and put the neck facing in, shall we? Come with me. Hey, I also need to remind you that half of my kitchen contents are sitting here in the sewing studio. So, I feel sort of brave putting this up because I like things to be tidy and they're not, not by a long shot. So um, there's gonna be quite a cacophony of mess behind me and I apologize for that. Now, these are the facings for my square neckline in my little Simplicity 7012 dress. I love a square neckline and I am using this retro to me fabric. It is a cotton. What I did on the back has this back seam for a zipper. And what I usually do with these old 60s dresses is I baste 
from where they want the zipper to start and they're always super long. They always want a 22 inch zipper. I baste it up and then I take it upstairs to my room and I try it on and I see if I can get it on without the zipper. And I could with this. So then what I do is I come back downstairs and just sew right over my basting in a regular stitch. Now I have my neckline to work with. So the neckline pieces that I cut out have two shoulder seams, of course, and then they have a back seam because that was going to be open to allow for the zipper. So I just sewed that shut with a 5 8 inch seam. Now what we always do with facings is we finish the unnotched edges. There are a couple ways you can do it. You can fold it in like that and stitch it. You can fold it in twice if you'd like and stitch it. You can go around here with a zigzag stitch. You can serge it. And maybe there's some kind of tape you can put on it too, I don't know. So I'm gonna go around it with my serger to finish that raw edge. This is my brother 1034D serger. Bare bones, gets the job done. So, put my fabric under and away we go. edges of our facing are finished. The point of that, of course, is that we don't want them to fray. Here is my neckline and we're going to attach my facing. We always attach them right sides together and I have some nice little notches here that the pattern has given me to match in the front. So I'm going to match those and place a pin. I don't like to use a lot of pins, however, that is simply a matter of personal preference. If you like to use a lot, by all means use a lot. Now we're coming around to match up our shoulder seams. And we want to make sure they lie open. Oh, I hate it when I sew one one way and it was supposed to be sewn open flat. So I'll usually stick a pin in there just to remind me to make sure they're flat. Other side, uh, match up shoulder seam. Place a pin, and on the back of this dress, where our zipper was gonna be down here, but I sewed the facing together instead, I simply match those seams as well. Make sure that's open. They always wanna just sneak shut on you when you're trying to get a nice flat finish. So I'll put a pin in there. And now we have pinned our facing to our dress and we're going to go sew it on. These old patterns want me to sew in a 5 8 inch seam and then trim. Now, you'll notice that with this dress we have four sharp corners, two in the front, two in the back. After I sew this facing on, I'm gonna show you how I hopefully get a nice sharp edge when I flip it to the inside. Okay, we are at the machine and I'm going to line up the raw edge of my fabric at the 5 8 inch mark. Lower my needle and I'm starting at a shoulder seam. So, I'm doing a 2.5 stitch, which is the default stitch length that my machine falls to. Here comes my first corner. And I'm going to sew right down 
past it until I am about five eighths inch away when I turn my fabric. Now I'm going to go straight across the front. Take my pins out. I'm bad about that. Here comes my second corner. All right, and now I go just a little bit beyond that corner until I can turn my fabric and be five and five eighths inches away again. Now I'm coming to my other shoulder seam. I'm gonna make sure that seam on the underside is open too like we talked about before. Here comes my third corner. Same deal. So past. You believe you're about five eighths inches away. Pivot your fabric. Line everything up. Remove your pen, make sure that the seam underneath is lying flat, and then turn your dress, the big portion of your dress over here, turn it as you go, that'll help you out. You want those raw edges lined up beautifully. And now we're coming on to our last corner. Pivot. And you're gonna meet up with your beginning stitching, which you can see there hopefully, right there. And I'm gonna just sew a little bit past it and I'll back up a little bit just to Lock it in. And now we have attached our facing. Let's go trim it and turn it. Here's what it looks like. You can see where we've pivoted at those corners, front and back. Now we need to trim them. So the first thing I do to get a corner to lie flat is I'm going to cut into that corner two but not through the stitching. And I'll do that on all four corners. Okay. Last one. Then we want to trim down this big seam that we have there. One thing I like to use for that are my beautiful WISS W I S S pinking shears that I inherited from an older woman who passed away and I got a lot of her sewing supplies. So I'm just going to come in rather close to my stitching, if you can see this, and I'm gonna pink. That sort of takes care of two things at once. Um, trimming the seam and also clipping little notches into it. So that's why I like the, um, ah, that's hard to cut right there. Where there's seam junctions, it's always a bit harder to cut. Uh, that's why I like the pinking shears because you get those little indentations. Here's a seam junction, a little harder to get through. But my gosh, I can't believe how old these scissors must be. 
because when Molly died, she was in her 80s, late 80s, and she had these from when she used to sew, which she hadn't done for years. And they just, they're just sharp as can be and make such a beautiful cut. Meanwhile, I had ordered some pinking shears from Walmart, you know, you get what you pay for, but they were so dreadful that I had to just, I just threw them out. They were so awful. And these old scissors just work beautifully. All right, so once we have our seam trimmed down and those corners clipped, we are going to flip this facing to the inside. And I am not going to understitch it. Sacre bleu. Well, sometimes I skip understitching and I usually do with facings. I know, I know. This is not what everyone does. This is only what I do. So take from it whatever you wish. I use my ham, my pressing ham, when I am going to um, turn facings. So I will turn my dress inside out. Kind of crisp fabric. Hear that? And I'm going to put it on my ham like this and flip it to the inside. And I have a nice hot iron ready to go. So when I flip it, I make sure that a tiny portion of the fashion fabric comes along with it because that way I will know that my facing is not going to poke out and show. So I turn it and I apply pretty high heat. Now I don't need to use a pressing cloth with this fabric because it is cotton. All right, so I would press and pin. Here comes a corner. What am I gonna do? The exact same thing. Turn it, kind of make a little corner out of it. Come up this side and make sure that a little bit of the fabric from the right side comes along with my fold. And I'm going to apply heat. Then a pin to hold it in. A nice little pin to hold it in. The ham, because it has shape, 3D shape, helps as the fabric folds over. And that gives me a very nice precise fold. I make sure that my seams are flat I'm going to fold and apply heat. Pin. I'll show you one more corner, because here's another one that we're coming to. So I would fold and press right until we're on that corner. Get that part done. Okay, and ooh, and at the corner, just pick it up, make sure your seams are open, fold, and sort of form the corner on your ham to give it 
that shape. What's in there? That's okay. I just need to do a little under press. Okay. Fold, shape your corner. Make sure none of the uh, facing is going to show on the other side and apply heat. Heat saves the day in so many sewing projects. All right, so we're just gonna go around and do that. This is how I love to do my facings. Um, and it may be controversial without that understitching. But you know, when we share how we do things, that's how we exchange ideas and procedures. And, you know, take it or leave it. You certainly don't have to do it my way if you like however you do it. Corner, shape it. Get that facing to behave. And apply heat. What I'm going to do when I have finished all of this turning and pinning is I'm going to anchor it with top stitching. I think top stitching looks cute. Here's a long piece, so that's easy because there's no corner there. And again, I'm going to show you just exactly what that turn looks like. That little bit of fabric from the other side right there on the fold. Pin. When I'm at my last corner, shape it, pull it, tell it what to do. You're in charge. Apply that heat and pin it down. Now I'm going to go back to my machine and from the wrong side, from this side that I have folded and pinned, I'm going to top stitch. You can top stitch however far from the edge you would like. I'm going to do about eighth of an inch. BRB. All right, I've put my uh, arm back on. I had it off to do some of that. Um, stitching before, but I'll put it back on. I'm going to start at my back seam. I'm going to stay about, oh, I guess about an eighth of an inch. And something I like to do for top stitching is make my stitch length bigger. So I'm going up to 3.5 and give this little starting thread a pull so that it doesn't make a nest. And then I just go around. Here is one of my corners. So I'm going to take extra care and take the pin out. Take extra care to go around the corner. And I'll do it exactly the way I did when I was affixing the facing. Oops, I have to go one more. Pivot. Lower. Top stitch. Another corner coming up. I can remove the pen. Arrange everything. Make sure the dress isn't all twisted up over there. Pivot. Everything's smooth under there. Pivot the dress. Lower the needle. Stitch. And I think 
this is my final corner. So I will remove my pen. Pivot my dress. And come back to where I began. To lock in my stitching. I'll go backwards one, two, forward one, and cut. All right, I have attached my facing. Now what we want to do, of course, is give it a good iron, a good pressing. We'll make our corners sharp. There's a little thread I need to cut out. Lie this guy down flat. Press those corners. Press, press, press. The iron is our friend. <laughs> <laughs> I think I said that before. When in doubt, grab the iron. Okay, if you see a funky crease like that, I would get out my ham again. Taylor's ham, is that what, it, what it's called? And I would just press that out until it looks good to me. And now I have the facing in. The corners are square. Now this stuff flapping around, that's always a liability of facing. So what I will often do is maybe stitch in the ditch so it's invisible stitching to anchor that facing down so that it doesn't flap around a whole lot. Or you can just put it on and kind of stuff it down and it won't flop up when you're wearing it. But there it is. It is installed. I didn't have to do under stitching and that is <laughs> that's the way I put my facings in. Square, round, whatever. Sometimes you can opt to skip the facing. I think there are a million lights reflecting around here. There's my sign back there that Brad made me. Sometimes you can skip the facings and you can use any number of finishes. I like to actually use a narrow hem finish with the serger if you have real light fabric. That is a really nice way to put in a finished edge. And of course, there's bias binding. So this is gonna be part of my little mini fashion show when I get the last Papa pick done. It's all cut out, it's the tunic. The quick sew dress is done, it's adorable. The cat fabric dress is done. It's a complete fail, but I'm gonna show it to you anyway. And I've gotta get busy cutting out my Fabric Mart fabric. Once again, it is beautiful fabric, and I hope what I'm thinking of making with it will transfer and look good. So I'm not on schedule, but I am doing my best. Okay, thanks for tuning in today. See me over there on Instagram to see what I've been wearing all through Me Made May. And thanks for being you because you are wonderful. I am saying that to you with my whole heart and I'm not just blowing smoke. I used to smoke. I don't smoke anymore. I don't drink anymore. And I actually probably have more fun. But anyway, thanks again, guys, for being with me today, and I'll see you soon.